Hey guys, so I wanted to show you a video on how I was able to get the M16 to look the way it is. So, as you can see, I got this paint skin I put on it as it used to be black. Left the tip orange because I don't know any of the state laws for this. But I got the striped skin basically by spray painting it, which was simpler than people think. It doesn't require you to do multiple coats. Well, it does require you to do multiple coats if you wanted them to look fine. And you could do two layers of the tan, two, uh, one layer of green camouflage, which is just a stripe around. I actually did another gun. This was a toy gun from like a while ago. This was my first thing I did just uh, before vacation a few weeks ago. It's actually... I don't know the name of what it is, but I took some black spray paint, painted everything. I sprayed the tan at first, even got inside the magwell. Spray painted this black, took it apart, took a few things apart just to do this. Trigger doesn't work, so it's kind of like not really functional. It just sits there. Did some paint splatters with black, took some of the pieces out, unscrewed it. And I'm actually going to show you today how you could actually spray paint your airsoft gun, toy gun, whatever you want to look, whatever you want to look real. So I actually did have another version because the first one I think was actually the one I broke, and then I had a second version. This is the original of these here. There is a piece lodged in the back which broke from the trigger. That's why it kind of just wiggles around. It just doesn't work. So which is causing everything not to fire or just work in general. What you want to do, you actually want to take out every single screw that may be in the way. Also, the, just not only to remove the back piece, but also to remove anything important that actually you might want to get to, like these small pieces here. You want to paint this whole entire piece. You don't want to just spray paint those that little part. Because the fact is, if you just spray paint that part, it's going to look weird under the gun and you're going to be able to see it everywhere else. So what you want to do is remove every single screw from the gun that uh, is on this side or whatever gun you're doing. Airsoft, you don't really need to remove anything. All you have to do is just cover important pieces with tape. Uh, I recommend printer's tape, which is highly recommended, or sorry, uh, painter's tape. It's highly recommended to use that because the fact it is easily peelable. It does not stick stick to the paint. So if you're doing the stripe, you already put your uh, tan layer. You don't have to worry about the tan wiping off with painter's tape as it sticks not as much as regular duct tape because duct tape will immediately take off every single part of the paint. And that's not what you want. You don't want the paint to come off. So if you're doing a striped skin like mine, you want to do it like mine, which I did the Delta Force, you know, Shigar and Gordon paint skin from Black Hawk Down and the actual event of Black Hawk Down. You know, you could search that up, you could get the skin, you could look for images. But I did that skin, which was easily done, like I said, just use tan spray paint, which I used Rust-Oleum, two times camouflage tan. Cap looks like a matte type can. Then I got Rust-Oleum camouflage, two times ultra cover. So it's like the other one, except for this is the cap. It's going to be a greenish, kind of like a darkish green. And you spray paint it tan. One layer, wait about 20 minutes, spray paint another layer of tan. And then wait about another 20 minutes and then lightly spin around the gun or kind of like spinning it slowly at the bottom have the grip at the bottom uh take the buttstock just lightly grab it as you're spraying it just kind of slowly turn it and just do that spiral look all the way down the gun and that will be able to get your look for the M16. As of this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll actually show you the painting process I'll do for it. Uh, it's very easy. The black or the black and tan one, the toy gun, which is this one. But that one was a simple 
I spray painted, I didn't spray paint it all the way with tan at first. I was actually, I took the painter's tape and uh, spray painted it, uh, the parts that I wanted to be tan, tan. I removed the paint and then the painter's tape and then put black, or put new painter's tape and put black on the other parts to get that cool kind of desert look. Took black, put some splotches on it, did do like light sprays, which caused the splotches. And that's how I got that gun. This one I'll sh actually show you how to do full on tan for this, uh, the tan and green. I wanted to do a tutorial for the M16, but I was just hesitant about it. I really wanted to get to it and was in too much of a hurry. So this time I'm, it's kind of supposed to be raining today. So this video might be delayed until like the next day or a couple days from now. But I will get this definitely uploaded. But I'm gonna do a fast forward and meet with you guys back in so a few after a balance of time, I just remembered I gotta take up the batteries. Batteries, you don't have to leave them in. They do add the weight to the gun. So if you want to actually, you could add stuff in this to put weight. If you want to make it not like lightweight where you just swing it around. You know, you want it, if you're going to Comic-Con or something, want people to actually feel like it's a real gun. Like, they, they're they like, oh yeah, it is a toy gun, but then they feel it's like, man, you felt, you made it feel like an actual weight of a gun. You know, you could do that. You could maybe apply some small sandbags in here, you know, kind of tape them to the sides or do whatever you want to try and make it to the weight it wants to be. Uh, you can search up both guns. Maybe some sand in it. Take them out for now, uh, but you can leave those in. Careful on getting damaged if your gun's broken. You want to take this off, uh, spray paint it by itself, of course. Uh, this piece comes off as well. Uh, you want to just spray paint this by yourself if you want. Uh, leave everything in the open, you know. When, as soon as you get your trigger glued, everything's good to go, you know. Start spraying it your tan color. Uh, then you wait the 20 minutes, spray paint it again. Do your green another 20 minutes later. Let it sit for... It takes about 5 to 7 days if you use rust oleum. If you use, like, any other paint, like this flat right here this took like not even 20 minutes to dry and I was able to actually easily pick it up on the other gun uh, regular tan I got actually regular tan back here just regular you know gloss added the gloss to that the other gun this dries easily quickly set it out in the sun do whatever you want this stuff takes longer to dry it does take five to seven days to apply whole adhesive on plastic metal it'll dry immediately but plastic it will not dry immediately it'll take at least five actually no it'll take about four or five days so that's what I had to wait for the M16 in order to pick it up even with my bare hands some of it's still coming off but uh, other than that it's pretty good to use I'll update you in a minute on how it's actually how I'll spray paint it right, guys, so I took a little time I put the painters tape around the mag area or sorry uh, shell eject area uh, I covered it in black, of course, I put a pretty long layer of tape around it. You are still going to get some tape, uh, paint on it at some spots because of the splash area. Uh, I screwed everything in. I left the site out of the way because the site does not be on, need to be on there. Uh, put this back on there so nothing inside could get of uh, destroyed. Doesn't matter with this area, you know, the speakers, if it's already broken, if you're not worried about it. You don't have to cover it. Left this area uh, blank, of course, because, you know, it's not needed. Uh, sometimes you'll get certain things stuck in there, but, yeah, I can, you can see I did leave this. You could even start peeling it off after a few minutes. Usually this paint dries pretty quickly. So you could even just set it, just set that tape aside, you know, put it wherever wherever you think you could leave it, just maybe if it's still wet, you could let it dry a little bit more, so it doesn't, you know, cause any havoc around anything. And you see I did a pretty clean tear, but yes, 
paint is still going to spread no matter what, no matter wet or not. It's going to get under the tape, which is also pretty bad, but it'll happen. So usually, so usually you just want to let that dry just for a little bit more. Uh, let it sit for a minute and let the paint absorb any, you know, if you're sitting outside, let it absorb the wind as the wind will actually basically dry a little bit faster. Usually in the sun, if it's sunny out, you can just leave it out in the sun, you know, just set it on a piece of cardboard or lumber or whatever you have, you know, just let the gun sit there, absorb this heat from the sun, have it beam down on it, don't put it in the shade, just let the sun sit on it, uh, let that dry. Usually with what I'm about to use next, which is the camo stuff, that doesn't take long to dry. It doesn't really need to set out in the sun. It takes not that long to really dry, like to dry on there. But you don't want to touch it with your hands, so you want to grab it by whatever side you think is safe enough to touch without damaging it or scraping the paint off. Uh, we'll get to that next. And I did glue the trigger. Not going to show that because kind of it's you glue it the way you want to. It doesn't matter how you glue it. Put big glotches in there. Whatever you want to do. Uh, if it's broken anything uh, when you're actually are painting a airsoft gun you want to paint no open areas if especially automatic you want to cover the area where the battery goes underneath the handle you want to cover the trigger uh, hold the hole where the trigger is with uh, some painters tape cover any holes that is gonna affect it you want to stuff some paper towels in the magwell uh, so that doesn't get anything, doesn't get damaged of the system inside where the mag goes in. Stuff some paper down, uh, or, uh, tissue paper down the barrel or cover it in painter's tape as well. And that's basically, you're ready to go with the paint if you want, uh, iron sights usually for an airsoft gun aren't removable. So you basically got to guess that way. I'll show you. A few things you could actually use to paint your guns. It's very easy compared to uh, other things to paint. You know, paint a car is kind of hard because you got to get it wrapped and do other things. But I'll be showing you uh, up next what I'm going to be doing to paint it. So we'll be moving on to that. Okay, so it's already ready to paint. I actually did not cover. I'm actually, even though I spray painted it black, if it gives any tan on it, I actually don't really care. Uh, the black was kind of maybe a protection later per se, uh, but when you get the paint, what you want to do is, if your barrel is free, what you want to do is put the string through the holes on the flash lighter and put tape around it. So whatever part you don't want orange, put tape around it. Uh, the whole entire flash lighter, uh, flash lighter, you want to actually leave orange on airsoft especially on arenas, just because state laws might have certain things, you want to do that. You take the strings, you attach it on to your holder, uh, where you could spin around, you know, do whatever. And uh, it's actually pretty easy here. I got the string in my hands, decided to ravel itself for some reason, but easy fix, just unravel it. All right, so what you do, simply take it, Pull the string as high as you want it. Uh, if this is something that belongs to your parents, of course, you want to have it low enough or high enough that it won't touch anything. Take it, string it around, uh, make one loop, then make another. Pulling this one as tight as you could physically get it. You don't want it to come off. And like that, the string is on there, so you're ready to paint the actual gun. Alright guys, so if you're wondering why I have the facial mask on, uh, this is actually so paint does not get my mouth or my nose. This stuff is kind of toxic to inhale, so you don't want to get that anywhere near anything that could possibly cause death. But uh, it, this is spraying away from me, but I am being safe. I got the tan spray paint right here, camouflage. And as you can see, you got the gun right here, and you're just ready to paint away. You want to do, kind of check it up, do light strokes, barely tap it, you know, sometimes, yes, it's going to spray pretty hard. 
but do light strokes sometimes. But that's what you want to do most of it, so you don't have to dry it as much, or as it doesn't need to dry as much. As see, I'm doing those light strokes all the way through, Make sure, making sure to cover everything I can physically get. As you see here, light strokes all the way through. Sometimes I'm sitting down right now, but usually in the yard you'll be sitting down on the ground, of course. You see, you want to get under everything, you know, make sure things sprayed. Get the top, get any anything that is not covered, covered. Turn it around and hold the strings. Get the other side of the gun. because the dripping won't cause as much as it would if you do hard strokes. If you're just continuously spraying, what it's going to do is the strokes are going to be too hard and it's going to take longer to dry. Which the longer it takes to dry, of course, you know, it's going to drip all the way through. So when it's dripping, that causes a lot of irritation for the gun owner as you're going to say it's like, oh, it's dripping. It's like, you know, it's, it's causing me streaks that I don't want. Well, that's where an easy fix comes in and you don't do hard strokes through. So when you're doing light strokes, you're having less chance of it spreading through. As you see, I accidentally did a hard stroke. So it kind of did not even out correctly. You see, so the gun spray painted like that. If you have gloves on, of course you can touch the gun. It's not gonna harm you any. If you have gloves, make sure to get every single spot under, above, whatever you can get, every inch of the gun. Spray paint it as much as you can. Don't leave any open areas if you, unless you want it open. I just see I am just doing light splashes and maybe if I didn't get all of it. As you see I did not actually get all the bottom. So that is a hard thing to get on here. Because you of course can't touch it. So it's going to be hard to get the bottom. But yet all you do, shake it up. Do light strokes again. Try and do as much light strokes as you can. Check every spot, you know, look around. Make sure you didn't miss anything. You know, you don't want to have anything of a miss. You know, that's going to cause a lot of pain in the, uh, the tuchus. And basically, that's the first uh, round of spray paint, as you see. Fully got it tanned, you know, all tan. It actually looks pretty good. Looks sandy as you know you're in the desert, so yet yeah, it shouldn't look like a, a sand type area. You see, I miss a spot, so you're going to cover that, of course. Uh, make sure you have everything, like I said. It's Sometimes it's hard to tell if you have every single spot. But sometimes you just kind of want to look and double check yourself, you know. Make sure everything is covered. I definitely missed some good spots. So I'm just going to do that. Let's see. I'm going to take this and actually grab it by one hole. Kind of lift it my way. Look at the bottom. Uh, as you can see, I actually got it all. So uh, I'm going to let it sit for about... 20, actually probably it's going to be 17 minutes now. so. Alright, so I actually had this piece, which I was, this is where the speaker was. I just painted this, so you see that's why I had the glove on. Uh, sight, sometimes on these sights, sorry if my hand's a little bit shaky, but I don't know if you can see, try and get as close as possible, you can see some of these rough edges. Those are caused by overspray. Or you just kind of 
miss the spot where it's hitting something. As it will do that, it'll crack and it'll roughen out as it's not sitting right or it's not drying right. Uh, this one actually got pretty good. It's already starting to pretty much dry. I'm going to set this down for a minute. Uh, I actually do got another accessory. So, I actually found this off of an old gun of mine. Uh, for the M16, I'm actually going to try and take... See, it has a hole all the way through. You can see all the way through that. And you see right there. I'm actually going to spray paint this tan, and I'm actually going to see if I can find a PVC, like a small PVC pipe, and see if a BB would be able to travel through. Because I could actually add a suppressor, homemade suppressor, onto the M16, which would actually be a good idea if I could get some small PVC pipe. So I'll be updating you guys in a minute on the next spray. Alright guys, so this is a suppressor. I actually took the filming out of it that kind of was just sitting in there. Uh, spray paint it tan. I'm going to try and do that green line. Uh, this is why I'm going to try and put the PVC pipe in and try and put it on the M16. So uh, I'll update you when I'm done. I'm going to spray the gun again. So actually the paint is actually pretty dry. It, I don't even think it's been 20 minutes and it's actually basically fully dry. I got the green spray paint right here, camouflage. I'm going to show you the stripes and how I actually did it. You see here, I do got the gun. What I do, I'm going to shake it up. Kind of do light splotches. Sometimes I won't fully show us, so you definitely got to, you know, do that. Follow the line. As you're following the line, it's going to create that pattern that you want. As you see, straighten the line. And you see, create the big line. You know, do big, do small, do you. This way. You don't have to always make these lines pretty big. Still, sometimes you just want to make it look cool. So if you want a big line, you can do big line. Usually you want to do small lines sometimes as it will. Sometimes big lines don't really like to agree with some people. So what you want to do, you know, finish up your gun, do your line, make sure you check where it is so you don't mess it up. Do that spray through. Do that spray on the sides here. You know, add a little bit of touches at the end of the gun, you know, do random splotches at the back. Make your line bigger. If you want, extend that line just a little bit. Sometimes the pattern won't always be great. You know, it's that's how it is. But actually, just like that. It's actually looking pretty good. And what you want to do after that, you want to make sure that sometimes at certain areas, you know, it's not going to look odd that you spray painted it uh, something else. So like with this tan piece I have right here, that's actually now dry. It's tan, but on the side I look at, it actually has a little bit of green on it. It doesn't affect much, but as soon as you uh, screw it in, you know, get it on there, then maybe you want to spray paint it again. Also, there is a little bit of uh, nothingness. I don't know if you can see little spots on there. The spray paint does stick. It will get better. And I did not get any one of my legs, but uh, that's actually how the gun shows right now. It's actually pretty good. I'll update you on how it looks compared to the M16. I'll show you some images uh, on the video. I'll show you just a still frame, show you about how the uh, guns look compared to each other. But that's actually what I got. As you see, it's not that hard. You just gotta follow a straight swerve around. It won't always be straight. Yes, it, you could try your best, but it, that curve won't always look straight as you want it to be. But uh, I'll update you guys in the next clip. Yes, I actually did get accomplished to get some more paint on me somehow. Uh, all 
All right. I'll see you. All right, guys. So after a few hours of work, the gun is f basically fully dry. It's touchable. Uh, already got it done, as you see, kind of here. You can see it just sitting here. This actually looks almost completely good compared to the M16. I made the scope. I am going to try and figure out how to put it on the, not the M16, but try and put it on this one over here, the new one. The rail's not big enough, so I might have to go get the other gun and do a little bit of adjustments, but it'll work. <laughs> Trust me. But this is basically what I have. It's pretty good. Uh, the scope looks pretty good. I also took Liberty of the M16. Took an old suppressor from a toy gun. It actually shoots through. I didn't. I didn't actually need this PVC pipe. Apparently, it has enough SPS. Took a little clamp and put it right there. I took another small suppressor and put it inside. I took that weird glossy stuff out, and it shoots through. It doesn't stop. It doesn't get lodged in there. It has enough FPS where it pushes it through, so uh, I'm actually only waiting on a few things from Amazon I just ordered. I got a bulletproof vest coming in. It's a, uh, it's more accurate than the ones I have now. It's for the Shigar and Gordon uh, cosplay. I got a sight coming in for the M16 and the rail uh, that goes right there. As you see, there is a hole where you can put the sight in, or the rail sight, or the rail for the sights. I'm going to put that rail on there as soon as I get it this Saturday. I'm ba I got four things coming this Saturday. I got the replacement canteen coming in tomorrow, which is good because the other one has that broken piece. I got another uh, a compass pouch that comes in, I think, roughly Monday, I think, the 16th through the 19th. Uh, I gotta get to Indianapolis to get a few other things, uh, but I am close to getting this almost done. I got a few guns, I, I gotta get two guns on Amazon, but they're expensive, trust me. The M14 and M4A1 uh, carbine, the actual two guns that uh, Shigar and Gordon used are pretty expensive on Amazon for the BB guns. Because one's automatic, and of course, you know, the M14, it's a rifle, and it's it's not string-powered. It's, you push a trigger, and it'll fire again. You don't have to reload it constantly, so they're both expensive. But they'll, I'll be getting those soon. Paint those the same way I painted these two guns. So, uh, pretty much that's all. I am hoping to get... I'll do a few more videos. I'll do an unboxing of all four things I get this Saturday. And I'll show the canteen as well. Uh, I get two boxes. So one will have the vest and I think a flash, the flashlight I'm going to get. Or I got. Uh, that'll go on the under barrel. Because uh, some, some of the guys uh, had flashlights on their guns. So I'll be getting that with the vest, and I think the sight and the rail uh, for the sight will be coming in on another box, because, you know, Amazon doesn't like shipping with big boxes. So those will be coming in on Saturday. I'll show you all those. I'll upload a video. So other than that, uh, this is basically the end of the video. So uh, like and subscribe. Uh, show some love, get some views on the other two videos I made. The intro uh, shows you a lot to what I do with this channel. If you're wondering why I spray painting these guns, why I'm doing it, that video will show you exactly why. Uh, I will be going, we changed plans, I won't be going to uh, the Grand Rapids in uh, Michigan Comic Con uh, in August. I will be going in November. So if you are there in November up in Michigan in Grand Rapids at the Comic-Con, make sure to look for me because I'll be in full uniform with my friend. He'll also be in his cosplay. So uh, I'll see you then, guys. So, all right. See you later.